Well, hello, my name is Stephen Good. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you're here. It's so good to see you guys. Yeah. Well, what you're going to experience over the next uh, five, well, four weeks and one day, really, is um, the result of a lot of prayer and planning and diligent work by uh, uh, a, a few dedicated people on the St. Andrews team, and so we are really excited that you're here. But one of the, of the things that we have been trying to answer, one of the questions that Christians have been trying to answer forever is, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? And as we've been pondering that question for some time, and as we've been trying to think through what would it look like for us at St. Andrews to create a, an experience that would give people a baseline foundational understanding of what discipleship is, the things that came to the surface were knowing Jesus, trusting Jesus, loving him, and following him. So we're going to experience uh, that together. We're going to ask some pretty good questions over the next five weeks. Uh, we are excited that you are here on this journey along with us. And so without any further ado, I want to invite Chap up, and he is going to tell you what it is that Branches is all about. Thanks. Great. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, this is, this is the culmination of so much time and energy and work, as Stephen said. Uh, on behalf of what God wants to do with this congregation, this group of people, uh, known as, and I know you're getting sort of sick, some of you, of the good ship St. Andrews, but we've, you're on it. And, and so now, a little seasickness may come into play as we go, because this is going to be quite a journey. And what's so incredibly exciting for us as a team, across the board, is that uh, so many of you have responded to this, not only those of you that have come tonight, and there's an awful lot of us that have come tonight, but there's a whole bunch of Life and Covenant groups and others that couldn't be here tonight that are watching this on tape, that are going to be going through this same process as you are going through with a bunch of us together to take a look at what does it mean to be followers of Christ. If you were here this weekend, I mentioned that we added a word to our mission statement, followers of Christ together, being together to ask these most fundamental of questions that all of us who name the name of Jesus, when we get into his word, when we begin to share stories, when we get to know each other in deeper ways together, is when the Lord does amazing things in our midst. So um, first, thanks. It's just so exciting for us that you've, uh, you've embarked on this journey with us. And, uh, but that's the first thing, this idea together. A few months ago, I started saying, and I've backed off a little, just not to mix my metaphors too much. I'm a writer, so of course I'm adept at that. <clears throat> uh, is Who St. Andrews is, as best I understand it, even the year before I took on this role with you guys, is uh, that we're called to be a neighborhood church. And what that means is we're not only a group of people, it, we're placed in a, in a geographic location. We've talked about this before, but whether you're in Santa Ana or Huntington Beach or you live in La Jolla and you commute up by train, whatever your journey is to get here among us, to be a neighborhood church doesn't exclude anybody that's not within a mile of this place. What a neighborhood church means, it means we're a neighborhood together. We are neighbors together. And a neighborhood church that has global impact, not emphasizing global impact. That is not our responsibility. We're not trying to build anything here other than faithfulness to what God's up to in the world. His great love for each of us, his great love for us together by his spirit empowers a, a, a movement, an energy, a response, an outcome that none of us can contain or control. And we start with this thing called branches. A couple of years ago, oh, actually a year ago, uh, a whole bunch of folks did something similar with this with another program. But the more we looked at that program in our congregation, we felt the need to develop something that's specific for what God has been doing and is going to do among us. So we've come up with branches. 
John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches, a few verses down there. Apart from me, you can do nothing, and that you is plural. We are the branches, and he's the vine, and we get to connect to him together. So that's the first thing I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> now, really what we're talking about is what does it mean to be a Christian, okay? Even the word Christian is debatably not even in the New Testament. If it is, it's other people calling us that. Uh, the original followers of Christ were called people of the way. They didn't use a label that was loaded with political, ideological, socioeconomic, ethnic boundaries attached to it or baggage. That we have a label now that I'm a Christian because I go to church. i am become a Christian. We have this label Christian. But to actually come to be in relationship with Jesus, which is at the very center of why we gather, is not really about putting a label on the outside of us. It's not even about primarily behavior. Behavior is an outcome that occurs when something's going on deep inside of us by the power of the Spirit. And that's what Branches is all about. We are not, we're not in to be talking about behavioral change other than those that occur because we get to know Jesus better. Certainly, behavior will change. But the focus of the gospel primarily begins, actually in essence begins with Jesus at the very center. And as we get to know Jesus, as we begin to trust him, as we somehow effectively begin to allow ourselves or continue for many of us to love him. And then as we take seriously his gospel, not just the New Testament, but the old as well, the history of the church, the fullness of the gospel, we follow him. These are daunting things. These will affect our lives. This will affect our behavior. It will affect our friendships, our time, our use of money and resources. It will affect our jobs, our vocation. It will affect everything because as we know him, as we learn what it means to trust him, as we love him, and as we follow him, we literally will become his. And outcomes will be what his spirit does. All we have to do is be faithful, and we go along for the ride and watch him work. You're in for a ride, so am I. This is incredibly fun. Jesus, uh, in John 17, it's known as the priestly prayer in the upper room before he passed away on the cross the next day. He prays something rather interesting for verse, verse 2, John 17. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. But then this verse, the next couple of verses, verse 3, verse 2. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life. This is Jesus praying, praying for you and me. Colon, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I'm going to be using that passage a little bit this weekend because the next four weeks I'm going to be preaching on the four topics you guys will be going through as we do branches. So this week, we're looking at what does it mean to know Christ. I'm going to preach on knowing Christ in a unique way compared to the book. It's not going to just be a copy of the book. So even if you miss, I really want to encourage you to go and check out the web for this. Um, but I'm going to be looking at knowing Christ this, this week. And then next is trusting him. And then the next week we'll be loving him. Next week we'll be following him. How does this all actually play out and work? And that's kind of what Stephen's going to talk about in a minute. But in general, let me tell you what the plan is. It's got four pieces to it. The first piece is this little notebook. Some of you have gotten it because you signed up, and the rest of you will get it in your groups. We have printed 750 of them, and i got to tell you how exciting this is. We're a little nervous. So we may need to do some illegal photocopying. Won't that be fun? So feel free, leaders. Go for it. Uh, my name is Sean Riley, and I said that's okay to... <laughs> no, I'm not throwing my friend and a great 
Godly man under the bus. Okay, so we are going to get this book, and what this book is is an opportunity for you to take during the week five different seasons. If you do it five days during the week, or if you uh, you want to do it for three days and you just do a little bit of overlap, and there's some opportunity for you to read a little bit and then write a little bit, and that prepares you for your weekly gathering in our small groups. When we gather together, three things happen in the small groups. That's why it's four things. First, we do our own work in the notebook. Then we gather, and we hear two stories. Because a piece of being the branches is we've got to know who the other branches are. We're, we're connected to each other, so we've got to know each other. And your leaders, starting tonight, and wherever you're doing this in your life group, will be modeling that and sharing their lives first. In very brief segments, four to five minutes, just so we can get to know each other a little bit more. Then we go into the content, and for the content of all of the weeks... I've done a little four to six minute video on the theological essence of that topic. Uh, as best as I understand it, I, I've kind of taken a lead on that one, and that video you will watch as a group, whether you're watching a computer or TV screen or in Deerenfield Hall. or where, There's a lot of different ways that this will happen. But when you gather, not this week, but starting next week, you'll gather, you've already done five of these things in here, and uh, what will happen is you'll come in, You'll hear the stories, you'll watch the little video, and then you'll just talk. Maybe you'll share what you've written. Maybe you'll ask questions about the topic. Well, here's my impression of knowing Christ. I never knew that before. I'm not sure I agree with that. Let's look up that passage of Scripture. Bring this and the Bible with you as you talk about what does it mean to know, trust, etc. And then the final thing is we're going to pray together. If you're not really comfortable praying out loud, relax. We'll have you do it week two. No, this is not about embarrassing in you. This is not about shaming you. This is about getting us together so we can be ordinary, broken people who have fallen into the lap of Jesus, our vine together. And therefore, when we're done with this whole thing, a lot of you have wanted to become members. We're going to do a new members class right out of this a few weeks later. For the rest of us, we're going to give all kind of options, a branches to the labs on Wednesday nights, ways for you to get involved in ministry or mission. But see, this is not the end of a journey at St. Andrews, though I did that thing. This is where we all get on the same page with the same vocabulary, the same understanding, the same conversation of what does it mean for a group of people to gather in Newport Beach, California at this season in history, and we come together to know to trust, to love, and to follow Jesus Christ. So thank you for joining us in this journey. And we so look forward to what God is going to do as we gather together for his sake and his glory.